video story presents a classic photographer Matthew Thompson from California, who is now based in Ostrava. Suffering from color blindness, Matthew shoots mostly on black and white film. Once he presses the shutter, he lets go of control so that his mind can focus on the next picture. I'm Matthew Thompson. I live here in the Czech Republic. I'm here because of my wife, who's from Ostrava, and so uh, we met in France and Spain, and then we decided to move here, uh, mostly because there's uh, no work in Spain. People in Ostrava tend to be like really from Ostrava, that this is, this is their place. So uh, my, my wife is one of them and we, we didn't want to go back to the US and uh, there was no work in Spain, so it seemed logical to come back here. I've been in Europe for maybe 10 years before this, uh, more in Hungary. And uh, my family is only like, we'll say, one generation away from Europe. That my, my grandmother is from Germany, and you know, I had aunts and cousins who were going back and forth between Germany and the US. And it, we'll say, not completely there, but there are some cultural similarities. My wife, uh, she was, um, right after we came to Ostrava, she was showing me pictures from like regional photographers to kind of introduce me and I quite liked them and so uh, I started just learning some more from them. I wasn't taking any pictures, I was just like looking at the, the books and so I looked at some other books like and then uh, in their home, uh, they had like a history of photography, kind of like it went through like from the beginning with uh, uh, plate photography and through Brasheye and Steichen and uh, Steiglitz and all this, all the way to we'll say early 90s was when the book was published. And so I kind of worked my way through and then I started taking my own pictures. I took lots of really shitty pictures. <laughs> uh, I, had a, I had a small digital camera, uh. which I used for maybe a year or so. And then uh, I put it away, and a friend of mine had said that I should just buy some small, uh, he, said, he said to buy an OM-1, uh, Olympus this small SLR and uh, just one lens and just use this for a while. That uh, your photography will substantially improve. And he was right. That my, my pictures got, from my perspective, got much better very quickly. We yeah, have mostly 35 millimeter. Uh, so, uh, mostly black and white, uh, but this is, I actually l would prefer to use color, uh, but I'm color blind. So it, it's quite difficult for me to use color. I try, I try and mix some in after, like if I start off in black and white, I shoot for a while and then I put some color in to try it. But uh, color is quite difficult for me, so it's mostly black and white that I'm red, green, brown, colorblind, and I just have difficulty seeing it the way everyone else does. For, for me, a hobby implies that uh, it feels less serious about it, you know, like nobody says to like, We'll say like, well, if you go with writers, so like Carlos Fuentes or Pablo Neruda or a variety like this that, or Kafka here in Czech, you know, uh, Neruda and uh, Fuentes worked in embassies and Kafka was a clerk. But nobody says like, oh, have, have you heard of that clerk, Kafka? People say, have you heard of that writer, Kafka? But he was never like a full-time writer ever. There is no real distinction. The only real distinction between um, 
professional and amateur. As a professional, you get paid. But in reality, there, there's only good pictures and bad pictures. I have very limited time available. I have two small children who take up a lot of time. I have a full-time job and uh, my time is extremely limited and I think I choose to use that time to take pictures. Yes. I, I could, you know, I could theoretically find some way to put more water in the basement. Uh, there, there's not really a, a a good water solution in the basement, which is where I'd have to develop them, but I just don't want to. Usually what I've spent my time doing is planning how to, how to, do, how to go and get the pictures with as minimal time as possible. So especially if I'm traveling like quite, we'll say, further away, then uh, how do I get to this place, get, to my, get the pictures I want, and get back by, by Monday morning to get into the office? It's usually that I have train schedules like time, bus schedule time to the minute to, to, you know, if you go six, seven hours, bus to train the bus to tra and you get to some small village and then to get back uh, by the next day or by Monday morning it, all your time is gone. <laughs> I, I have a we'll say perfectly prepared framework. I, it's, it's the same with projects. I have, an, I have an idea of things that I'm following. Uh, we'll say pilgrimages, for example. I go on a lot of pilgrimages. I walk with pilgrims. But this is like a, a framework that I'm free to go off. I'm, I will look at something else. It's, it, it, if I don't know where to go next, then I can always come back to this. That some, some kind of reference point. It's constantly evolving, like it moves, you know, I'm in one thing leads to another, to another, that I, I'm not chasing some specific thing. Uh, it is humanistic, like I'm interested in people, but uh, it's not necessarily like I, I do follow things like something would be like a story or uh, a category maybe, but uh, I, I don't feel bound to it. So I'm looking more for some like feeling of the photo, like uh, some mystery or some contradiction in it. That uh, is not just, I'm not just chasing some individual story. I walk in and start taking pictures and if you know if they ask what uh, who are you like some of the villages are quite small I just, I'm quite upfront like I'm wanted to take pictures of a number of fashion celebrations so like for example I went to these villages already and if it's okay like if no one's offended then I'd like to keep taking pictures here but, <laughs> but nobody ever is offended it, uh, so far, anyway. I, I'm not like going out of my way to, you know, may, make a friend instantly there, but uh, I'm also not necessarily hiding that, you know, I don't have some long lens. Yeah. I'm not laying in the bushes. I'm, I'm quite close. I'm usually using some uh, I don't want to say very wide, but we'll say slightly wide angle, and I'm usually quite close. Usually my wife, uh, because she's uh, quite uh, brutal in editing. That uh, her family comes from, we'll, we'll say her father is a curator. Uh, gallery curator 
and the, I would say the whole family is quite strongly opinionated, about, opinionated on what they think is good and what is not. And so usually she looks at my pictures and it's like, shit, 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 cliche. Uh, this is like this is lazy. This is this is crap. And oh, this one kind of works. It's usually something like this that I will end up with five rolls of film and I will choose one picture that is a maybe. I traveled for a number of years. I was working for a logistics company and I was traveling all over Europe and the Middle East. And um, It could have a lot of experiences. I think it just help, it helps you more in that, um, you know, when, you, when you're doing photography that it's something a good picture will show something from from you out there and it will take all these experiences and smush them into one little paint on the picture. And in that way maybe it helps that, you know, it, it helps for sure that you're uh, familiar with people and places and experienced enough to get around that you know, or gain some access, but uh, I think that, that it's not so clear-cut that it influences in this way or that way, but that it comes together and it, it it's like behind the picture. At the moment, Matthew works on several projects and plans to publish a book. We will keep you updated on www.afuk.cz.